Hello and welcome to today's NBA betting picks video presented by lineups.com. I am your host, Drew Norton. With me is the always good looking Braxton Reynolds. We are on day two of the in season tournament. So far, so good, Braxton. I feel like, you know, the first day was uh, was really good as far as the knockout rounds. Um, we had an amazing game. The Pacers game was insane. Uh, so, so far, so good. So hopefully those these next two games tonight are going to be uh, kind of similar. Yeah, I'll sacrifice a day without basketball if that's what I get. I mean, that Pacers-Celtics game, that was a playoff game. That You cannot convince me that was not a playoff game. Just yeah. the way it felt, the way the guys felt too. I think, you know, fans can always feel a certain way, but it's the players that matter. If they think it's a playoff game kind of atmosphere, then everything derives from that. So it was a great thing. I think Adam Silver's onto something. Yeah, I'm I'm actually surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised, because I think this is a um, successful operation so far. And I can only imagine, you know, that was the quarterfinals. Imagine what the championship game is going to be. I mean, especially considering, you know, there's a lot of teams out there that are very top heavy as far as salary cap. You know, you got a lot of teams that have guys that are on, you know, really pretty small deals relative to, you know, uh, some of the bigger contracts in the league. So it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting. $500,000. So all right, with that being said, Braxton, what is your first pick for the day? All right, I'm going Jalen Brunson over 32 and a half points and assists. So minus 120 DK. And I'm also playing an alternate 35 and a half plus 152, surprisingly. So Brunson's played nine games against bottom 10 defenses in terms of defensive rating, and he's averaging 35.1. P plus A per game. So that's a good mark for me when I'm taking this, when I'm looking at it. And then you look at what he did against the Bucks in early November. 49 points plus assists. 49. And we need 33 here. That's a very good mark. And then, you know, you look at their defense. They're allowing six most points per game to point guards. They just have no point of attack defense at all. Lillard and Beasley is a terrible combo to run. You cannot have two guys that are a little bit undersized and can't hold their own in isolation. It just doesn't work. It's why they have been really bad defensively. And you look at the numbers. They are really bad. They're, lo- they're allowing the second most mid-range jumpers because guys are penetrating the pick and roll. And then because Brooke Lopez likes to kind of backpedal and protect the rim, protect the paint, it's leaving off the dribble jumpers in the mid-range wide open. And what does Brunson do? What is Brunson's favorite thing? In the mid-range. Pick and roll, step into the arc, mid-range jumper. That is what he loves. It's what he's very good at. And he's going to shred Milwaukee just off that alone. And then you factor in off the dribble threes, which they allow at the eighth highest rate. And then you factor in you know, his drives, transition opportunities. I love Brunson points here. And then you look at assists too. Bucks are 21st defending three-point line in terms of opponent shot quality so that's another spot where he penetrates and you know say the bucks do step up if they adjust drive and kick every time you have open shooters they're shooting well recently you know brunson's at roughly seven assists per game over his last nine games so that's another boost for it i just love brunson here 32 and a half are you kidding me books after you give me 10 and a half on trey murphy last night we'll do that six plus on jalen brown Give me 32 and a half on Brunson. I will take that any day. Yeah, I think that's absolutely outrageous. I mean, yeah, the Bucks point of attack defense is absolutely atrocious. And, you know, this is this is a team that is, you know, expecting to compete for a championship. I think they're going to struggle in that area. You can't let Drew Holiday and Javon Carter walk, you know, or trade one and, you know, whatever. Like, it's not that you, you had it all right there. You had it all. You had two of the best point of attack defenders in the league on your team. And now you have two of the worst. So it's just it, it's such a big switch, um, such a big flip. And Brunson, yeah, Brunson is is 
you know, he's a, he's a thicker player. He's going to be able to kind of body Lillard a little bit, um, I think, and, and kind of get off the looks that he wants to get off. And yeah, historically is, you know, looked good so far as far as this number. And yeah, I, I really like this pick a lot. My uh, pick today is going to be the Phoenix Suns money line. So, you know, we look at this Phoenix Suns team, 12 and eight overall, and we're a little bit underwhelmed with the overall record, but we understand, all right, lots of injuries, whatever. When Devin Booker's on the floor, this team is nine and two. They're shooting as a team. They have a team shooting split of 49, 42, 84 in 11 games. That is a big sample size for such outrageous shooting splits. I mean, 42, nearly 42% from deep as a team is exceptional. And it's going to be challenging for a Lakers team that, you know, throughout the past few seasons has not necessarily been known for their consistent overall offensive presence. So I really like the Suns, you know, offensively in this spot, you know, they have Booker, they have Durant, they have Nurkic, they have Gordon if he plays, they have Grayson Allen. They just have guys who can knock down shots. Suns have been hot. They've won eight of the past 10 games, plus 5.8 net rating with Booker on the floor, which places them, you know, sixth in the NBA if he'd played for the whole year. Lakers are two and two in their past four games. And, you know, even though they're two and two, look at the teams they beat, Houston and Detroit. And say whatever you want about Houston, they're going to regress negatively to my expected mean. (laughs) I do not think this is a playoff basketball team. They cannot win on the road. The other shoe is going to fall. So they beat Houston. They beat Detroit two of their past four games. Okay, great. They got absolutely slaughtered by OKC and Philly. So in the past four games, when they've played against teams that have been higher quality, a team like OKC, a team like Philly, now they're playing a team like Phoenix. I, I just don't love it right now. You know, Rui Hachimura, limited minutes, still no Gabe Vincent. LeBron's questionable. It would stun me if he d- didn't play, but the team could be a little bit beat up. I just think there's a lot to like here. Um, for the Suns, and I think they're getting pretty good value here, pretty good plus money value on their money line here in this spot. Yeah, I mean, you look at going since the Durant trade, when Booker and Durant are on the court, Suns have a 126 offensive rating. That would lead any team in NBA history. So it would be 119, I think, 118 was Sacramento last year. Yeah. the highest so 126 shatters that they are just so flawless offensively and then you surround him with catch and shoot threes you have Nurkic who you know Davis won't want to really bang with him in the post I don't think that's a good matchup for Davis this Lakers defense against the Suns offense I'm with you I think Suns money line here and you know it'll be interesting to see if the playoff kind of atmosphere affects this game at all I don't think it will in terms of your pick but it you know, just could be interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm really um, my second pick. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I'm really interested in that for sure. Cause I I think, you know, it, how does that affect it does seem like like LeBron and like this Lakers team is taking this whole in season tournament very, very seriously. So it is interesting to see, you know, how how that is gonna affect things. But yeah, go ahead with your next pick. Same game, going Nurkic over nine and a half rebounds. So Lakers are 29th in offensive rebound rate. They don't crash the glass, which, you know, first step, that's good defensive rebounds for Nurkic. Lakers are also a bad three-point shooting team. Another good thing, because that is going to create easy rebounds for Nurkic. So just right there, based on the matchup, I like Nurkic here. And then you look at his history. He's hit, um, what is it, he's hit, 10 plus in nine of his last 11 matchups. And the two that he missed were this year with nine rebounds. So nine out of 11 and then one off to make it 11 out of 11. Lakers allowing the sixth most rebounds per game to centers. It's just a good matchup for Nurkic here. I don't see 
how he doesn't get like nine or eight at a minimum. And then, you know, based on the odds, I would take 10 every time. I'm a little hesitant to play double double, which, you know, would be a good spot if you wanted to do over nine and a half rebounds or assists because, you know, Davis's defense on him is a little concerning. I think, I don't think I would risk it and still play the rebound straight. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I would not throw points in there at this, you know, I, I don't think you're getting enough value to justify, you know, the possibility. I mean, the Nurkic, the Suns Grizzlies game that I watched the other day, you know, the thing with Nurkic is is he's very vertically limited at this at this point um in his career, lots of injuries, all that kind of stuff. I think he's going to struggle against guys who are really really long, still really really gifted athletically as far as finishing in and around the paint. Um, I think a lot of his, you know, rebounds are going to come off of missed free throws, you know, missed threes. Lakers offense, you know, we talked about it. I just think they're very inconsistent, very up and down. Playoff atmosphere like we're talking about. So there should be lots of misses. I don't necessarily see either team being, you know, going 50-40-90 uh, to win this game. So I, I love, you know, Nurkic rebounds. I don't love you know, muddying it up more than that with him. Yeah, I agree. And then, you know, finally pick Brooke Lopez over one and a half threes. It's juiced, but I'm taking the juice because Knicks are allowing the second most threes made to centers. And, you know, you look at his history. He's averaging roughly six attempts from three over his career against Robinson, which is about a nine game sample. That's pretty significant. He went four for 10 in their previous matchup a month ago. He killed them. Big splash mountain from three. And, you know, it's, it's because of how Robinson plays defense. When you have the high pick and roll, and Robinson's a guy that likes to play a deep drop, you know, it does help you deter drivers that get past the ball handler, which, you know, to be fair, is how Lillard and Beasley are allowing opponents to do. Like, opponents are just getting past them. So Lopez needs to be where he is. Um, or excuse me, Brunson, and it's allowing pick and pops for um, opponents. So I really like Lopez here in terms of how Robinson plays defense and, um, you know, getting minus 155. I think it's it's juiced, but I like the EV in terms of the probability of it hitting. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think you look at, you know, opposing centers versus the Knicks this season and the kind of defense that they play and the kind of defense you can expect from Mitchell Robinson and Brooke Lopez is in a, in a really good spot. I think the Knicks are a a pesky team altogether and pesky on the defensive end of the floor. And especially in an environment like this, as far as clean three point looks, they're not going to get a whole lot. The, um, did I say Kings? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't know why I felt like I said Kings for some reason. Um, no. So the Bucks are not going to get a lot of clean looks. That's what it was. Clean. Okay. Um, clean looks. Because, you know, they're going to be up on them. They're going to be going over screens. They're going to be trailing right on their hip. And as far as good looks, Lopez is going to be their best option to kind of spread the floor a little bit and hopefully get other guys open. So, I really like him in this spot. I think that's a really good pick. All right. That is going to wrap it up for us today. Um, Stay tuned. We will be back tomorrow for now. Um, Go ahead and like the video. Throw a comment if you uh, agree, disagree with any of the picks, and hit subscribe if you enjoyed the content. We will be back.